Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. So this officially starts Unit 13 on the treatment of abnormal psychology and our first set of notes for that being on the psychological therapies. Um, we actually have a chart to go along with this. So psychological therapies on the front and then on the back would be biological therapies. And we're going to cover both of those in this one set of notes. Um, so just go ahead and follow along and we will get started. Just a quick brief history here of the history of insane treatment, which we've kind of touched on already, but the poor treatment of insane people throughout the ages was based on irrational views and that the patients were subjected to strange debilitating and downright dangerous treatments like torture essentially because they were believed to be um, possessed or some kind of demonic possession, right? Um, and that, that's not really the case anymore. Um, Felipe Pinel in France and Dorothy Dix in America founded humane movements to care for the mentally ill. And you could really start to talk about, we could talk about this for days, how the mentally ill are treated even nowadays, um, and that how do we as a culture deal with mental illness. So really quickly, let's talk about the difference between the front and back of this chart. So you should kind of make some notes at the top, even though I've kind of filled in some things for you. And that psychotherapy involves an emotionally charged, so it's more emotional, it's not physical, confiding interaction between a trained therapist and the patient. So confiding interaction in that the patient wants to confide in the therapist and talk about what's going on. Um, and then the biomedical or biological therapies being on the back of your chart is the use of drugs or other physical procedures, very physical, biological, that act on the patient's nervous system, hence biological, curing him or in hopes of curing the person of the psych disorder. Um, and it says on your notes here that over there's over 250 types of psychotherapies with about half of the therapists using what's called an eclectic mix or approach of techniques within the therapeutic setting. So eclectic, that's a big vocab term you should know, it uses various forms of healing techniques depending on the client's unique problems. So they don't just focus in the psychoanalytic or behavioral, they focus on multiple, but they also could, as a psychiatrist, throw in therapy with the use of drugs. So let's talk about the psychological therapies. We're going to look at four, the four major ones, but then also family and group. So psychoanalysis being the first formal psychotherapy to emerge with Freud, and there's his famous couch. And this is what you would stereotypically think of where you just lay on the chase lounge and you say whatever comes to mind, right? And that is the free association that's on your chart. But first, the aims of psychoanalysis. So you have a column on your chart that says aims is to bring repressed feelings into conscious awareness where the patient can deal with the problems and the feelings consciously. Okay, so again, it, it's repressed impulses or even conflicts in childhood, bring them into conscious awareness and deal with them. So the methods that they use, we've touched on free association before, it's to unravel the unconscious mind and its conflicts. So the patient lies on the couch and just speaks, whatever comes to mind, there's no censorship there. Then we have two vocabulary terms we wanna talk about that are on your chart here but you don't want to just know what they are. You want to know what the psychoanalyst wants to do with them. So the psychoanalyst looks for resistance. So during free association, if the patient edits their thoughts to resist the feelings and express emotions, that's resistance. So they might hesitate or say, oh, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about that, or I'm not sure. Um, that area becomes important in the analysis of the conflict-driven anxiety, and the psychoanalyst will say, no, 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 I'm going to push you. We need to talk about that. So they look for the resistance in order to hash out those issues. But eventually the patient will open up and reveal the innermost private thoughts to the therapist, sometimes developing positive or negative feelings towards the therapist. So they transfer those feelings that are deep inside them onto the therapist. They do not want that at all. So they try to avoid it. So in the last column there where it talks about the role of the therapist, they would interpret all of these free association, all these hidden conflicts, right, to provide insight into problems and feelings. 
Another big thing to consider, and maybe write this in the margin, is criticisms of psychoanalytic, which we've talked about with personality. It's hard to refute this perspective because it really can't be proven or disproven as working. And it also takes a long time. So it's, it's expensive and you're paying for the therapist on an hourly rate, which is hundreds of dollars per hour. And it's just, it's a lot. 